do you think the floor is about 600 at this point? Do you think we'll go lower than that? No, I don't think we'll go lower than 600. In the last price analysis I did, um, I said that I believe that the price floor could be anywhere between 600 and 650. Obviously, it's not 650. Um, I thought for I thought for a brief minute that it might be 620, but then today it went below that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's hard to predict, it's right? Hard, it's hard to determine price floors because um, you know it's not a price floor isn't really a concrete thing. Like what a, what I consider a price floor to be is just the bottom point of a trend. You know, like you like if it goes below a certain point, then the trend is effectively over, and we've established a new trend. Uh-huh. Um, but it's hard to determine what that is, because if you look at it as like, well, if it gets to this certain point, and then it stays like that for like a week, and then it um, and then it goes up, and it doesn't you know go down past that point until like some really bad news, like is. If you say that's a price floor, I say, is that really a price floor or is it just, you know, a little bit of sideways action, which means, you know, the price was stagnant. It didn't move. Right. Um, so when I talk about price floors, I'm pretty much just speculating and I don't really put a lot of weight into it when I do analysis just because they're so uh, like they're just so they're so hard to track and establish that um Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think using price floors is a really good analytical tool. I think I rather would rather focus on watching trends. Yeah, and and like another thing with with Bitcoin is negative news a lot of the time can come out of nowhere and hit people by surprise. And this Bitcoin foundation drama that has been happening this week, um it's not that heated yet. But it's possible it could get worse if more people resign from the foundation over transparency issues. But, you know, those kind of headlines showing up, that could inspire, you know, speculators to sell on that news. And then all of a sudden, you've got a lower floor than you anticipated. And and, and it was caused by, you know, ineptitude and stupidity at the foundation. Yeah, realistically... Um... In terms of, you know, trend analysis and the future of Bitcoin price, if you want to be really safe when you're talking about a price floor, um, I would say the price floor is $430 because um, we're still, um, in my opinion, we haven't, the Silk Road thing didn't establish a new trend. It was just created a slight divergence from the upward trend that was established like in May, in early May. Yes. And at that point, the clear price floor was between 430 and 450. Yes. And so in terms of that, we've gone nowhere but up. So if, like I said, if you want to be really safe while talking about price floors, I would say since we're still in the same trend that we've been in since May, I would say 430 to 450. That makes sense. But, um, yeah. But, you know, in terms of trying, trying to determine a, a price floor, uh, a new like short-term price floor that's that was established because of the auction. Um, I don't know if you could even do that. It's been really hard so far. Uh, I've I've still been right so far. The price is still between six hundred and six fifty, but um, but the you know the auction just created a huge amount of excitement. It made the price go up to six hundred fifty dollars. Uh, where previously it was at what 560 570 or something like that yeah and um you know so as you know that that excitement is obviously wearing down because the price is at 617 right now um you know there's no telling where it could go like it it could bottom out at 600 or it could go back to you know the, you know the excitement could completely die out and go back all the way back down to 560 again you know who knows right right so you're basically saying that uh, we we kind of like reached the floor already uh, around early May, around the the 430, 450 range, and since then we've made a lot of progress um, in in terms of uh, price movement, and it's pro- it's not going to go below that unless something truly truly catastrophic happens. 
uh, you know, G-Hash.io commits a double spend attack, just, just speculation, you know, something horrible like that. That's the only thing that could drive the price even lower than 430, let's say, right? Yeah, I think, I think no matter what, um, you know, like no matter what happens, except for, you know, some huge like cataclysmic event, um, it will not go under $430. And if it does, we've established a new trend and it's a downward trend. But, um, you know, trying to determine a, a price floor like post Silk Road auction, it's really just, it's really just speculation saying like, um, like I don't think, I think the Silk Road auction generated enough excitement that enough people got in and are holding on for the long run, and so I, I don't think that the price will go below six hundred as long as the stream of good news continues. But mm -hmm. if we enter the possibility of bad news into the equation, um, then it very well could go below six hundred, but. As long as we stay above 430, I would say we're in the same upward trend with just you know a slight, a slight divergence yeah. because of bad news. Yeah, and then you've got uh, you know huge venture capitalists making predictions like it will hit two thousand dollars by the end of the year. Um, I'm looking at this story uh, from the Telegraph that was submitted to Reddit. Um, this venture capitalist named Jeff Lewis predicted at the Coin Summit in London that Bitcoin will hit $2,000 by the end of the year. So, you know, of course, you've still got the people who are very, very bullish, um, even in the, in the short term. Um, we're already halfway through the year, and to hit 2000 by the end of the year, that's pretty bullish, don't, don't you think? You, do you think, do you think, do you, do you agree that that's possible, 2000 uh, well, by the I'm end of the year? I'm very bullish on the future of of Bitcoin price, I wouldn't be surprised at a thousand. But for them to say two thousand, they must know something that I don't. You know, mm. they must be getting ready to do something really huge that nobody knows about. Mm. Um, because I don't really know where they get the numbers from. Like, I think one thousand is a reasonable prediction because um, it you know it would go along with the gradual uptrend that we've seen since May. Right. Uh, because you know there hasn't been. Like there's there's been you know brief spikes in the price where it's jumped up like a hundred dollars in a couple of days, but you know between May and July 10th is today's date. It's really been you know steady gradual growth from 430 up to you know 617. Yeah, yeah, and so, and also you know, we've been above a thousand before, as most people know, late last year. So that wouldn't that wouldn't surprise that many people to see us go over it again this year yeah and I think um, I think I actually said this in one of my very first price analyses that I did um, I think that once it gets above 1,000 there will be a pretty big sell-off because there's a bunch of people who uh, took a big hit because they bought in at a thousand. Yeah, and or eight hundred or seven hundred and such. I would I would say that those people are pretty fed up with Bitcoin, and once they get a chance to break even or get a small return on investment, they're gonna sell. So once mm. it hits a thousand, it could go back down a few hundred dollars easily, just because of that. Just because of the fact that there are people who took huge losses in uh, November and December. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So that's a definite possibility. I think that's a likelihood. Um, but after that happens, I see no reason why it wouldn't continue to go up. After that, it's to the moon, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. 